I would like you to just start, if you don't mind, just a, a quick um, high level. Like, what are the biggest issues as you see with industrialized agriculture that we need to be um, aware of and, and, and worried about and working against? And then actually shift to, well, so in the book, what are some of the high level stories you can tell of what people are doing to work for change? Yeah, thanks, Tammy. Can everyone hear that okay? And, and thanks very much, everyone, for turning up tonight. And thanks, Tammy. Um, Tammy's being a bit modest. She, in case anyone doesn't know, she heads up the Australian Food Sovereignty Alliance and has wider international input. So she's a real change agent as well. So thanks, Tammy. Uh, yes, there's, it's, there's really only a few chapters at the start where I touch on industrial agriculture and what's led to it. I guess where I am uh, attached at the Australian National University, down the corridor from me are some of the world leaders in looking at climate science, it's physics and chemistry, um, issues like biodiversity. And when I talk to them and, and read the papers across the spectrum, not just um, climate science and physics and chemistry, uh, frog ecology, bird ecology, there's a, at least a 95% consensus that um, we have moved into a new geological era of Earth called the Anthropocene. So uh, the last 12,000 years of the Holocene was that ideal period when agriculture evolved and therefore uh, human civilization, which ironically has led to us now uh, with our use of fossil fuels but other things in, into this dangerous state where we've disturbed a number of the Earth's major sustaining systems. And to answer what Tammy is getting at, a major player in, in that disturbance of those key systems from climate to water to biodiversity to land use, uh, the nitrogen and phosphorus cycle, destabilisation and so on, a major player is industrial agriculture. Um, in, in the overclearing that it enacts, which releases about 20% of carbon immediately into the atmosphere, whether it be Amazon rainforest or what's going on in Indonesia, let alone Australian ongoing clearing. And, and then the use of um, chemicals and fertilisers, so uh, like you know, industrial nitrogen, 90% of that comes from fossil fuels. So um, I guess in a way, therefore, that's the big context that industrial agriculture is a big player in tipping us over the balance in some of those systems. The converse, which is what I focus on in the book, is that regenerative agriculture can play a major role in um, in turning that around by pulling carbon, uh, long-term carbon into the soil and reducing some of the other destabilisation of the cycle. So that's really the big picture background to, to what you're um, asking, Tammy. So maybe actually, because how many of you have only just got the book? I haven't read it yet, because it's just come out. And even if you got it, it's not a small book, and so it might take you a little while. Um, although not that long, it's, it's a page turner. Um, uh, maybe give, can you give two or three of the stories of some of the things people like? Actually, I really like some of the contrast between like Alan Savory's work, Colin Sizer's work, um, and, and there's the other guy who I didn't know from New South Wales. The previous book that I wrote, one of my first one, ended up being fairly big, about a thousand pages on the Merino history because of its photos, etc. And I had an email once from a client threatening to sue me because he'd suffered concussion when he fell asleep reading it. But. Uh, <laughs> not as bad as that, as that book. Um, yes, it, 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 what I try and do in the book, because uh, what worried me, I, I guess I should go back a step and say why I wrote it. Um, I ended up having to leave university at the age of 22 and take over our family farm um, when my father had a heart attack and um, I was an only child so <coughs> there's no one else to do. And, um, Growing up on a farm doesn't mean you know anything about managing a complex landscape, let alone the business part of it. So my early years was a catalogue of major mistakes. I, I, not knowing anything, I asked what, what I thought were the best operators in the district, uh, the best farmers, and um, sought advice from departments of ag and um, CSIRO and stuff, and then set about um, what I thought was good farming, which. Um, so I ended up doing things like ploughing sandy paddocks and washing, watching a storm wash a thousand years of topsoil off onto the fences. It took me half a day to shovel them and I ended up leaving sheep in paddocks, <coughs> which in effect is one of the most destructive things that destroyed a lot of Australia's landscapes because what's called set stocking, they keep chewing the most valuable 
green perennials and uh, forms and things and when they collapse, the system collapsed and, and one of the stories on that concerns Western Victoria. Um, there's a wonderful record of one of the first settlers came over from Tasmania, Van Diemen's Land. And not understanding the landscape, it only took 15 years to totally destroy that grassland landscape. And I mean deep erosion, gullies, salt, you name it.